with the version 12.1 Next.js released incremental static regeneration on demand. But what the heck is it? Welcome to DevRel, my name is Sam and today we're going to talk about what on demand incremental static regeneration of Next's newest version 12.1 is and what is different between the normal incremental static regeneration. So to recap, incremental static regeneration is a form of generating static files. So this means we have our database here with data and we have our markup on the server. And before a user or a client asks for the data, we already put the data we have on the, on the database to our markup and have it ready. So once the client is asking for the data, we send the whole bundle to the client. But what happens if our database changes? So we, instead of name seven, we have name six here. Then of course the client still gets the name seven. So the old markup with the old data. This is where incremental static regeneration comes in. We regenerate this markup content package. Depending on an interval we set on our code. So this will look like this. Here we have in our get static props, which comes from Next.js, our revalidate prop. So in this example, each 100 seconds, we refetch the data on the server. So this markup content package gets updated. But of course, as programmers, we get taught very early on that we shouldn't rely on these kinds of intervals, but our data or our content generally should be updated once our data updates and not in a specific set interval, which depends on the time. And this is where the new incremental static regeneration on demand comes in. So let's jump into the code and check out a live example. So this is a very basic Next.js app. This is actually a repo coming from a different video I did about all the fetch methods of Next.js. So if you didn't really understand what I was talking about just now, make sure to check out this video right here. The link to that is in the description down below. So what I did here is this example of, of the incremental static regeneration. I copied and pasted this code and just renamed it to incremental static regeneration on demand. And the only thing I did is take out the revalidate time. So this is exactly the same code as we would have in a static generated site. But what's different here is that we have now this API folder, which is something from Next.js. If you want to find out more about the API folder, check out the documentation of Next. But here we have this revalidate.js file. And this is where all the magic happens because here we have this unstable revalidate. So of course, at the moment it's in beta that we can call to update our statically generated files. So let's start up our server, but we don't use npn run dev. We actually have to build out the site so we can see the difference. So now that the site is built, we run npn run start. And now we can go to the page. Now we're on slash IRS on demand and this app just reflects the data that I have here in this mock API. So if we add 13 here, for example, and we refresh the page, nothing is going to happen because this is just a statically generated site. But now if you ping the route slash API slash revalidate, we get this back. And now if you refresh our slash ISR on demand page, we can see the changes. So again, because we pinged this route slash API slash revalidate, which has this unstable revalidate method where we put in the site's name. So this has to be the name of our site here. So if you would want to put in ISR, not this site anymore would update, this would actually update. So that's where we define which page actually gets the update when this API route gets pinged. So of course you can add way more logic here, but I just want to give you a small example how this would look like in a real life application. So let's say you would have a blog post like this here. You would add to this publish form or to this publish button. You would add, first of all, of course, that the uh, data is saved, but then you would also ping this API route each time you click save. So your Next.js application knows to refetch the data and generate a new static file. Of course, with some CRMs, you might not have the option here to add your, uh, your specific logic, 
this is what brings me to the next point when to actually use ISR on demand versus the normal ISR. So in my opinion, you should use ISR on demand if you have very heavy data fetching um, load on your database and you don't want to refetch, let's say every two seconds or every 60 seconds, because this might add a lot of strain to your um, database if you have, let's say, 100 pages doing that at the same time. But most databases should be easily able to handle those kinds of loads. But again, if you have a lot of uh, strain on a specific query or something like that, you might want to opt into the ISR on demand. And of course, the other thing is if you have a use case where the data should immediately and only change when there is actually a change on the database. But I really think you should look like as the normal incremental static regeneration as the default option. So that was it for this video. If you have further questions about Next.js or React, I just started a consultation service. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know with an email. The email is linked in the description down below and we can see how I can help you out. I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.